What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com, back with another SketchUp layout tutorial for you. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to generate a door and window schedule out of our model. So before I get started, I do want to take a second to thank my latest supporter on Patreon, Michael Shea. On Patreon, as most of you know, is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing on this channel, if you think uh, what I'm doing here is useful to you, please consider checking out that link in the notes below and thinking about supporting the show. Now let's go ahead and just check. Now the first thing I want to note is I pretty much set up this model wrong when it came to the doors when I first set it together. I was kind of lazy and I didn't do everything with components, which is a terrible idea. I'm not really sure why I did it that way. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to model my doors with components. Um, so that way what we can do is or you don't necessarily even have to model these with components, but you do have to label them a certain way. And maybe what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll go through and I'll kind of show you what we're going to do first, and then I'll go back and change everything so that it comes out the way that we want it to come out. So the first thing we're going to do is if you look over here in your outliner, if you remember, we set up our model where everything was kind of nested a certain way. So we had a section for doors, a section for walls, all of that different stuff. And the reason was so that we could turn things on and off in our model so that when we move things over to layout, we could do different visibilities and that sort of thing. And as a part of that, all of our doors are already grouped together. And we're probably gonna do a window schedule as well. So you can see how our windows are also grouped together. So we're gonna take advantage of the reporting function in SketchUp and we're gonna generate a report out of our model. And so in order to do that, you're gonna to go to File, Generate Report. And in this case, we're gonna select the option for Create New Template. So just click on Create New Template and You've got a bunch of different options here that we're going to take a look at. So the first thing I'm going to note is there's a few options for your selection. Um, and the selection means what do you have selected in your model that we're going to do a report on. Um, because you can do a report out of the whole model or you can also select different objects in your outliner and just do a report on those. And so I'll go ahead and give you an example of this. So for example, if we take Let's take our definition name, our entity name, and our quantity. And we'll put all of those into our report. Well, right now, if I just run that report, what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me a report of every object in my SketchUp model. So every single thing that's inside an object over here in the outliner is gonna show up in here. So obviously this isn't very helpful to us. You can see how this gives you all your drawer pieces. Um, it's got all your door top pieces, bottom pieces, all sorts of junk that you really don't need. And so we're gonna go ahead and dial in our filters a little bit. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to come into our outliner and you're gonna click on doors. And so now doors is your current selection. So if I move this out of the way for a second, you can see that the doors are all selected in your model. So now if I run this report, it's still gonna give me everything in the whole model. What you need to do is you need to check the box for current selection. And so if you check the box for current selection, then what that'll do is that'll report everything within your doors group. And if you remember my doors, every object has a door itself in it, and it also has a swing. And we put the swings in there so that they'd show up in two dimensions in layout. And so what we wanna do now is we wanna set our component nesting. And so our component nesting levels is saying, it allows you to set what level of your outliner you'd like this to show up. So for example, right now this is set to all, and so you're getting all of the swings, you're getting basically every object within your selection. Well, if you come in here and you check the box for enter value and you put a value of two and then run your report, you can see that's only giving you your door objects out of, out of your um, outliner. And the reason for that is you're basically telling it anything nested to the second level. So the first level in SketchUp size is the doors group itself, the overall doors group. And then the second level is anything that's inside that first group that you have selected. So in this case, doors is the first group or the first level. Each individual door is the second level and then the swings are at the third level. So I, if I was to change this to level three, 
and run the rapport, it would give me all the swings. And so we want to leave this on level two. And so now we have that in there, we run our report, we can start kind of dialing in what we want this to look like. So like, for example, if I put a note inside the entity description and run the report, like for example, I put a note in my three foot by seven foot door that it had a lock. So that's inside the component description in my model. And I'm probably going to go back and change that actually, because I don't want that to show up for every one of these, but you can set that up that way. And so the other thing that we're going to do is we're also going to give each component a name. So like, for example, the way that components work, they have both a component name and an instance name. And so what that means, is if I was to come in here and name this A1, if I was to name this component A1 and then click off of it, you can see how that's going to show up as A1 and then door three foot by seven foot. So if I was to come back and run that report, which I forgot to save, now we could bring in entity name, definition name, quantity, and entity description. Well, now you can see this is bringing in the entity name of A1 and then the definition name of door three foot by seven foot. And so if we took another door, I'm gonna go ahead and save this so before I do anything else. I'm gonna go ahead and call this door schedule. And you could save a description, which would be especially helpful if uh, you were using this with other people or something like that. But I'm gonna go ahead and click this save to model button. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna erase this door out and then make a copy of this component. And move that over here. So now what I have is I have two copies of this A1 component well, I'm going to go inside this one and I'm going to name this one A2. And then I'm going to click off of it. So now you have your A1 door and your A2 door. Now, if you run that report, so you do file, generate report, door schedule, and make sure you select your doors and you run it. Now your door name is going to show up in here. So you can name all of your different doors. And so by doing that, you can organize your entire model into a door schedule. And then the other thing we can do is if I wanted, for example, to run the windows in here as well, I could hold the control key and I could click on windows. So now I have my doors and my windows selected. And if I run my door and window schedule, now my windows will show up in this list as well. And so you can kind of move these things around if you want um, in order to get kind of the the look that you're going for. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to replace everything in this model with components and rename everything. And then we'll export this into layout. All right, so now I've got my doors in here and they're all named properly. Um, each instance has a different name or a different label and they're all copies of components that talk about the sizes. So now we're gonna select our doors group and we're gonna do a file generate report and we're gonna run the report that we created again. So go ahead and click run. And you can see one thing to note about this is when you do this, you want these to be in here um, so depending on how many doors you have, you want to make sure you have the zeros before the single digit numbers if you go into the double digits. Otherwise, when you sort this, what will happen is you'll get an A1 and then an A10, 11, and then an A2. So in order for these to kind of sort properly, you're going to want to make sure that you have these labeled this way. And so now you've got, you've got a report that gives you your name, your definition name and your quantity. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove entity description for right now. So I'm just gonna to go to edit, click on entity description and remove that. So now I have three columns and we're gonna export this and send it over to layout. 
And so the way that we're going to do this is you're going to click this button for download. And when you download it, it's going to download this file and we'll go ahead and call it door schedule and click save. And it's going to ask if you want to open it now. I'm going to say no. Basically what it does is it brings it in as a CSV um, file. So it's something you can open in Excel as a spreadsheet so you can edit it in there if you want to. Go ahead and click the button for yes. Uh, we're going to make a quick edit so that this comes into layout properly. And do note that you will need some kind of spreadsheet editor on your computer. In this case, I'm using Microsoft Excel. All right. So you can go ahead and click yes on that button to open that up. And what that's going to do is that's going to open this in Excel. I want to make a couple quick changes to my item or my uh, schedule in Excel before I send it over to and before I send it over to layout. Specifically, what I want to do is I want to sort these by name so that they come in in order. And so I'm just going to click the little boxes over here and do a click and drag. And you're going to go to the sort and filter option. So you're just going to click the little drop down and click sort A to Z. So that'll sort that by your first your first set of uh, data. Um, from A to Z so you can see how that put that in order. You could also do a custom sort and tell that to sort by your first column A to Z so if you wanted to sort by something other than your first uh, column you could do that as well. And so we're just going to go ahead and click save on that and we'll see if that works. I don't know I think that that'll fix the order but let's let's go ahead and give it a try. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go into layout and this is the document that we created before and you basically want to go to file insert and you want to select that schedule. And I'm going to go ahead and just do a shift and tap the arrow keys to move it up. If you remember, you can move things around by doing that. And then now, if I look at this, these are all in order. So that's an important step to go in there and change that in your Excel file. And so now I can click and drag this to resize it. And you can also use the text style function in layout to adjust the way that that looks so you can click on your table to select it and then you can adjust your fonts your typefaces all those different things and not only can you do the entire table you can also come in here and select individual cells so i double clicked inside here and then i did a click shift click shift click so i'm just selecting those and you can adjust those so that they have a bigger font So you can use that to adjust the way that this looks. And then if you wanted to, you could come down to your scrapbooks and you could select an object for your door schedule. So you could click and drag that in. And then you could go ahead and edit this item, maybe. There we go. <coughs> you could go ahead and edit this item and you could call this door schedule. And you could set this to like maybe detail B on page one. And you could probably remove the scale item. You could also copy that and move this down here and we could just call it floor plan. And we could call that detail A on page one. And so if you had to go back in and make a bunch of changes, you're going to want to make sure to update your model. So you can just go over to File, Document set Setup, and uh, make sure you save your SketchUp file. But then click on this, and you can just click Update. And what that'll do is that'll update this with the new information from your SketchUp model. The reason we did that is because I'm going to add a couple labels. So if I click on this label, and then I click on this door, I can make a note off to the side, and I can use a label so this is going to ask me to choose an entity and then I can either put a label in there for the door number or I can put or I can select the component definition so in this case for this door I can click the little drop down and I can select door three foot by seven foot or I could also do the same thing where I could get the actual door 
number itself. So if I wanted to, I could do A02 and I could select the label for the door name itself. And I can adjust these the same way that I was adjusting everything else over here in the text style. But basically anything in here that has any information, you can pull that out with your label. So like if I click on this TV, we'll see what we can come up with. You can basically pull down information for whatever's in there. So in this case, we'll go ahead and we can do this entertainment center LR, but you can use your label function to pull different notes out of your model. So that's where we're going to end today's video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Uh, what else would you like to see in layout? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.